What's your favorite comedian, Anthony Rogers? Live in his tour bus, yeah. But also, you need to get a beard like this. People have been talking. They, they said your shit looks whack. It looks weird. They can't tell your pronouns. You need, you need to get a beard like this right now. And the only way to do that is by using luxurious bastard beard oil. Great smell, great function, great everything. Just get this. And there's directions on how to use it if you know how to read. But use the link in the description. Go to the website. Use promo code LEGENDARY. Get a discount. Do it. Thank you. Boom. Smokey's Edibles. Gluten-free. Dairy-free. Vegan. No corn syrup. Ugh. Way better than other edibles on the market. Get them. Get them. Get them. Eat responsibly, obviously. Like when you watch the show. And you're not doing anything. You're at work or anything like that. That's obvious. But some people have to hear that. Um, definitely, these are the watermelon. My favorite of the peach. I just grabbed these last night for something different. Sour watermelon sounded cool. I've had them before, but I just wanted a little something different, you know? Uh, make sure, that's 21 and over. Make sure they're 21 and over. Buy them for yourself. They're amazing. Eat them before the show. Eat them before every episode, like me. So I'm Dennis with the Anthony Rogers Show podcast. My question for you is, what would you do if you became president to help the working class? Well, you know, the, I think the, the principal thing right now is housing. That the price of housing is uh, is going up, and it's beyond the reach of mm -hmm. most American families. Along with oil and I, gas and food. Yeah, yeah. Well, inflation mm -hmm. is is hurting everything, and inflation is more complex. Mm -hmm. I can't say that I'm going to stop inflation overnight, but I can say. Mm -hmm is that I'm going to stop the, cause, the long term cause of inflation. I'm going to unravel a war machine. I'm going to reduce dramatically health care costs by ending the chronic disease. Welcome back to the greatest show in the entire universe. Um, today we have a huge guest, an absolute legend. Uh, it goes by uh, Lord Miles. How are you doing, brother? Hey, very good, thank you. Well, actually, not so good. I'm in England, so I'm in danger. You know, knife crime, all the other stuff, but. Off that, not too bad. What about yourself, man? Well, sorry to hear about England, man. Like, uh, sorry to hear about that, dude. You've done so much crazy shit, man. Like, uh, like, uh, like, like. For, first off, you were telling me that you, you, uh, that you talked to you talked to the Taliban on a, on Facetime. You were just telling me before we start this. Yeah, yeah, just casually. I was chatting with one of them earlier. I was also chatting to Pablo Escobar's brother earlier too. I've got a weird schedule, a weird network, but you know they're chill like that. Sometimes I just call the Taliban. I say, "What's up?" They they talk to me in Pashto. I I speak little Pashto. We talk about our day. We make some jokes. Um, I've made some CIA jokes to them before. They always laugh. It's it's a good networking opportunity, you know. If you don't have Taliban in your circle, I just don't know what you're doing nowadays. I share I shared the uh the promo picture for this and like uh and and like one of my buddies was like pointing out he goes he goes he looks like he's having a good time talking to the Taliban and like from my understanding like you had a good time while being like uh like you were captured at one point. Yeah, well, what happened was I was taken into Taliban custody for eight months, as you casually do. It happens for the best of us, doesn't it? But for eight months, I had the best adventure of my lifetime. It was so good that they actually invited me back. So at first, they were like, Miles, we think you're a spy. We think you're here on espionage. And I was like, you know, you think I'm a Fed? No, I'm very easy. Thank you. But yeah, I'm not a Fed, guys. Um, I'm not Mossad Miles. I'm Lord Miles. I started talking to the Taliban when they were interrogating me. I make some jokes, they laugh. I meet some commanders, I network, I tell them some business ideas, I make some jokes. They think, this guy's all right, this guy's fine. We're going to give him some privileges. And then I just chill with them, have tea time from time to time. I'm sitting there in Taliban custody with my laptop. I'm watching a new Barbie movie with the Taliban. I'm watching Titanic with the Taliban. I'm just goofing off, right? And then after eight months, they're like, this guy's all right. This guy's pretty nice. I like this guy. This my guy. He's a good white guy. He... he Come back, Miles. And you know what? I went back, and I've been back, well, seven times in total. So, yeah, Taliban and chill, dude. Dude, that's so hilarious. So what What are the members of the Taliban like? I've never met any of them, obviously, like uh, like like most people I imagine other than in the Taliban. What, what are they like, actually, as people? like? Well, I'll tell you about one gentleman that I'm friends with. He's the head of foreign intelligence for the intelligence agency of the Taliban, the GDI. So this guy... He, he's a little bit crazy, but in a good way. And he fought the Americans and he told me some stories. So this will kind of summarize 
the Taliban in general. And he basically pulled me, he pulled me aside one day and he goes, Miles, let me tell you a little story about the Americans. I go, all right, all right. And he goes, oh, what we used to do is plant a bomb and the bomb would have a little bit of explosive. So it would blow off the legs, you know, but you, you, would, you wouldn't die. So the guy would be screaming when he gets blown off the American. Ah! And from that, um, some American would run over. And then guess what? Their legs would blow up too because there's another bomb. And then he would just repeat saying, and then guess what? Another guy would run over to help those two guys. And there's another bomb. And they explode too. And then guess what? Another guy runs over to help his three guys and there's another bomb and he continues saying there's another bomb for about five straight minutes and he just keeps foaming at the mouth going oh another bomb another bomb another bomb and then he just starts talking about how much he loved he loves austria because they created a german man in the 40s and they have glocks and he likes austrian chocolates these people are like the fun schizophrenics you see on meme pages if that makes sense they're a little bit insane but bloody hell they're interesting yeah, yeah, no, it's, I mean, they gotta be, like, just, real, they're, I mean, they're fighting for their own country kind of thing, too, I mean, I'm, I'm not really involved in any of that, you know what I mean, so I, I, I think war is kind of stupid regardless, I, I mean, I don't really, I don't know, I don't know, it's hard for me to pinpoint really, you know, on the best, that's nuts, though, that you have that experience with them, um, because, I mean, from what you, what people hear is, like, you see all the beheading videos and all that, and somehow, somehow you didn't get beheaded, and, like, they just, they're just cool with you, and, like, you, you end up being, like, uh, social media friends with them or something, which is kind of an interesting take at that uh, I've never heard it ever until I looked into you. Oh, thank you. Well, it was quite chill in the beginning. At first, when they captured me, they were like, okay, we want to test if this guy, Miles, is a soldier. You know, if he's an ex-soldier, if he's a soldier, he's probably a spy. It makes sense, right? So what they first did was handed me a loaded M60, and they just gave it to me. And there's about 10 Taliban surrounding me. And they want to see if I can hold it properly, if I know what I'm doing. And I've been to the front lines of Ukraine a couple of times just for like a hard day over Christmas. So I'm holding the M60, and they go, Miles, check if it's loaded or not. So I go, oh, okay. So I, I put it on, you know, I think it's semi-automatic and I put it through the roof of my head, like the roof of my mouth, click, it doesn't go off. It's not loaded. So then I point it at the Taliban commander, click, and you know what, it doesn't shoot. So I, I kind of make a face going, ah, oh, rats, you didn't, didn't shoot me. And everyone's dead silent. <laughs> and then everyone bursts out laughing and they think it's funny but like ah this guy <laughs> that's so fun. that's so funny but i don't know how you've been i don't know if uh if you describe this or not i didn't i didn't hear this part of it how were you captured like yeah so i was at western union i had a house in kabul and i was had to pay rent and of course the a country of afghanistan isn't connected to the outside banks like you can't transfer between afghanistan and say england it's got its own internal banking system so the only way i could send money to myself is through uh, Western Union. So I sent myself about $1,000 and I went to a Western Union and I took out that money. And then suddenly they stopped me and they were like, okay, Miles, this is a sus amount because this is kind of like half half a year's salary to us. And we want to know why you take out such a, a large amount of money. You know, what's your angle, Miles? And I go, oh, it's no problem. I'm going to sort out in five minutes. And then of course, eight months later, I got out. <laughs> huh. That's crazy, man. Like, yeah, I'm I need to read your book. I haven't read that yet. Is there an audio book for that? Because I'm stupid. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't read my book either. I can't read or write. But yeah, my book is about me <laughs> being at the fall of Kabul. I'll go and grab it. Thanks for a free plug, by the way. I'll see you in a second. Oh, yeah. I put it in the description, too. So if you're watching this, I'll link in the description to, uh, for his book as well. Lovely, guys. So this is Lord Miles. And it talks about my time during the fall of Kabul because I was there accidentally as a tourist as you casually do. Um, and then I just started hanging out with the Taliban and the British SAS. Um, I got evacuated in C-17. I just chilled on bo with both sides, goofed off a little bit, had a white boy summer, had some fun. And you know what? It was really fun. So the SAS, they gave me some level three plates, an M-16, and said, Miles, if the Taliban come in, you have to defend yourself. And I go, you know what? That's okay. And that's the British Special Forces. So... It was the best holiday I've ever had. And ever since then, I've been traveling to the most dangerous place around the world, as the old British explorers did. I like that. I like that you say, you put that in your bio, and, I, and I, I agree with you, man. You are, you are the modern explorer, man. Like, uh, for, for the sake of, like, laughing, though, can you call the Taliban right now? Like, can you, <laughs> are you able I'm, to? I'm calling on my phone, but I guess I can show you some messages on WhatsApp, if that makes sense. Because, truthfully, I 
with the head of foreign intelligence, I don't think he would be too too happy if I suddenly just let's see. Let, let me get to so I know, like the devil on both shoulders is what's I, I know I want to as possible. I get it. I'll beat the law up allegations. One second. Uh let me cover his name. But yeah, you see me here. I'm messaging him in Pashto. You know, he's a cool guy, he's a chill guy. I pull that out and a seconds uh, at a moment's notice. I chat with him on Twitter as well. But yeah, that's that's the Taliban right there. And to be fair, if, if I called them, they would start talking about Jews, which I can filter out sometimes. I have my opinions. But for them, they they would get the stream taken down. But yeah, they're just oh, they're just yeah, yeah, no, we're on YouTube at least. Yeah, we got a lot of yeah, got, I've, everyone I've got, everyone's on YouTube right now, it looks like. Yeah, I've got a North Korean woman in my DMs. I've got the head of foreign intelligence in my DMs. I probably have the CIA in my DMs, but I just don't know it. A um, bunch of other YouTubers, just just like a nice little well-rounded, you know, contact list. As you my, know. my process was like, if I had more people on Rumble right now than YouTube, I'd do it. <laughs> That's what I was thinking right now. I'm, I'm, I'm like, man, okay, we only got we only got like a hundred people on like Twitter, Rumble, and, and Facebook combined, and everybody else is on. It was like three hundred on YouTube. I'm like, man, we got too many people on YouTube for that phone call, I guess. But yeah. Anyway, oh, but no, I love time. that, man. It's uh, that's just. <laughs> next time we'll figure it out we can schedule something with them that would be hilarious dude we should interview the Taliban at some point that would be hilarious they're chill um, dude I mean at the end of the day they're a bunch of lads because some of them are like 20-30 years old if you meet an old member of the Taliban he's survived a lot but if you meet most of them they're like 20 years old they've got guns they've got jobs and they're like ah, we'll just goof up a little bit and look after the country at the end of the day you know they're just like me they live love laugh all right. I, love <laughs> I love to see that in, like the caves, man. You like or whatever whatever they're in. Are they in caves, like stereotypically? Like like into games, sorry? No, caves, like 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 how TV like makes oh. it I've I've, I've never they seen them. Yeah. Well, I've been to Tora Bora. Do you know where that is? I'm not familiar with that. What is that? Oh yeah, so Tora Bora, a few people might know it. It's a bin Laden caves. That's where Bin Laden okay. hid out before we fled to Pakistan. I went there with the Taliban on like a little tourism retreat, a nice little holiday. And when I was in the caves, they were exploring. They were like, oh, this brings me back to the old days of the jihad of the war. And I was like, what, what was it like? You know, it brings you back in a good way or a bad way. And they go, oh, Miles, I have to work 12-hour days doing paperwork now. I have to I have to sit in an office and deal with retards. But back in the caves, I could just shoot and throw grenades for fun and just sit around a campfire and just and just watch a TikTok from time to time and and shoot your helicopters like they they miss those days in the caves so right now they're in normal office blocks they're in normal buildings they recaptured back in the day yeah they, they've got a whole map of caves and he said you know i got told this they said miles when the chinese invade they, they believe the chinese are going to invade we'll just run to the caves again and you know what we'll still have a few canned energy drinks there waiting for us from last time yeah, I bet the Chinese will invade. I think, like, yeah, after uh, after America, le- uh, Biden, like, left all that equipment there. Yeah, no, I, I bet, that's funny, I bet China will invade there, actually. I never thought about that, but that's probably totally true. Mm-hmm. You're right. But if the Chinese evade, I promise the Taliban, hey, I'll be their top guy. I'll go back with a camera, and I'll document their war, and I'll, I'll create some uh, fun little videos for them, and they'll get some YouTube clicks. And then white women will change their profile banners and you know profile pictures to the Taliban flag and so and do protests in London for some reason. That's so funny. <laughs> to take a couple of questions here live. Someone's asking when you'll do your next video. He said he's been waiting forever yes. for you. He or she I know tell me about it. Yeah. So I had some trouble with my editor and also receiving payment from uh, it's a long story. But 14th, that's the date basically. So we've got now a website. I'm gonna drop a bunch of Taliban merch that I'm selling. So I'm the biggest exporter of Taliban merch of the West, and I'll coincide with my YouTube video. So there's one giant advertisement. And that YouTube video is gonna be me driving with forty thousand dollars worth of Taliban merch from Afghanistan to Pakistan and then getting on a smuggling boat from Pakistan to Oman and then driving to England. And then the next one is a Tora Bora video. And then the next one is explaining why I was away for eight months in Taliban detention. And then the one after that is shooting an RPG with the Taliban at an anime body killer, Miku. 
that's that's so fun dude like hearing you describe these videos like it's nothing it's hilarious too like like these are like just crazy and all i mean interesting and awesome i'm not trying to i don't mean crazy in a bad way i mean it like just like a way more interesting than most people's youtube videos i hear um and uh let's see what did the what did the taliban think of uh anime body the anime body pillow well when i received it a day before i was meant to fly I realized on the back was, you know, a bare ass of Miku. So it wasn't, it wasn't properly censored. It was uh, a bit lewd. So I had to go with the scissors and cut out the actual pillow. So it was appropriate. So you've got some breasts cut out and the ass cut out. And the Taliban saw it and they picked it up, you know, in customs. And they were looking at it and they go, what is this? And they go, it's just cartoon. And they say, yeah, just cartoon and give it back to me. And I said, no problems. <laughs> well, honestly, I, I win the video. I explained to them. I say, "Hey, Taliban, my tally bros, you know my tally foes, you know." I told them, "Hey, there's this disgusting thing called anime, where you know people think these cartoons are their wife, and these people do not talk to women, and it's kind of cringe because these people um, fantasize about having relations with a pillar." And sometimes a pillow gets so used, it actually stands up on itself. And they were like, yeah, that's not good. And I was like, let's play with an RPG. And he said, let's go. And you know what? I said, we're so back. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot of, that's a lot of truth. Those people are, are weird as fuck, man. Um, like, uh, so, someone else, uh, do you have bed sheets on your bed? Someone's asking. I don't even know if I wanted to ask that. But uh, I, I feel like I have to read comments sometimes. Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, does mom have no sheets on his bed? Yeah, I don't know either. It's a weird question. I just pulled it up. Well, it was a I guess question. I'll answer. But yeah, there's there's my bed sheet. There's my tanning bed, and you know. Oh, the they probably stuff. thought the tanning bed was. They probably thought your tanning bed was a bed that wasn't made. Oh yeah, That's no, it's just it's just yeah. a normal tanning bed as you do, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I sometimes use it to dry my clothes. <laughs> This, this is a good question too. Someone has in the comments. Uh, what kind of food did you get when you uh, when you're in house? Uh, when you oh, I thought it was when you're captured. I want to know yeah. captured, but like let's get to this question first. What kind of food you have when you're in house arrest? Is what they're asking. Well, I ate better than I did in England, to put it lightly. So you know that thousand dollars I was arrested with. What well, he said, Mars. We think you're right. You know, I committed a small crime in the beginning because I, I basically didn't have a permit for one thing. I'm like, ah, we got we can't put Miles in custody, but we're gonna we're gonna bend the rules and give him some nice stuff. So he gave me that thousand dollars and said, anything you want, you tell one of the guards, they'll take you to the market and you buy it. I go, oh okay. And I had a bunch of crypto, and they said, oh, you can convert that to cash if you want. So I was like, okay. And then from there, I was ordering takeaway. Dom I actually had uh, there was a Domino's in Afghanistan, so I ordered Domino's. I had yeah, pizza, I had burgers, but I also had traditional food, which was basically rice, naan, meat, chilies, that type of stuff. Um, there was these kind of beans that kind of were very creamy and had a lot of protein. Um, they were just very nice. Uh, lobia in Pashtu, very good food, and the naan, beautiful, all freshly made. I lost a ton of weight. It was an excellent diet. But at the same time, I was I was well fed. Like I, I if I wanted sweets, I would get it. If I wanted anything, I would grab it. And when I came out, when I got back home, my friends looked at me and said, "Miles, I thought you were gonna be a skeleton. You look healthier." And I was like, "Yeah, of course, I'm Lord Miles." <laughs> what? Uh, how was the Domino's in comparison to? Uh, I've never had it in England either, but in comparison to your country, how was the Domino's? Oh, it sucks, dude. It was not good. I only ordered there once or twice. Um, it was kind of, it was like if Americans came to Afghanistan and showed a picture of a pizza and they said, yeah, just go and make it. They never told them, you know, the intricacies and the art of pizza making. So a lot of the fast food feels like emulations of a Western fast food. It feels like really, really budget rip off McDonald's. I believe every city or downtown has like this one random chicken wing shop that no idea knows how it stays open probably a money laundering scheme because it's food is trash you know there's like it's like that's like what the thing is in afghanistan for all fast food so the local food is a lot better and but you know from time to time you feel like eating some slop so it was okay <laughs> yeah i was wondering how how, uh, how how they how they did how they uh made pizza over there like was, what, what, what was that about bacon. Do yeah, no, no bacon, oh, bacon. Oh, no bacon. 
Oh, what, what did a nigger have to do to get some bacon in Afghanistan, dude? I, I asked him. I asked them. I was like, hey, do you ever eat, like, pigs? You can't eat them, but I can. And they were like, sorry, Miles, we exterminated a pig from Afghanistan. I'm like, fair play. Okay, fair enough. Um, but at the same time, too, it was, like, really doughy, if that makes sense. Everything's really thick. So if you get a piece of bread in Afghanistan, it's not it's not thinly sliced. There's no such thing as uh, a thin crust. It's basically all crust. And the tomatoes, they just taste a little bit off. The cheese is very different. So it's not, it's not the you know, lovely cheese that you kind of get a craving for, you know, it really fills the stomach. You know, it's just, it's just cheap brand. They cut corners everywhere. The only the good thing is the vegetables because everything's grown very freshly, non-GMO in Afghanistan. But, you know, it was, it was worth uh, one or two chow downs, I guess. But yeah, I wouldn't order it from Afghanistan to England anytime soon. Dude, that's 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 crazy, man. Like, uh, this, this is a good question too. Chauncey's asking, um, uh, what in your opinion was the most beautiful thing you saw in Afghanistan? That's that's a great question. Yeah, I went to a mirror. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, I wonder why I can't get a date. So <laughs> but um, I I would say so. This is what happened. So when I was about four months into Taliban custody, they said, "Moki Moss." We're going to take you on a little holiday. We're taking you on a road trip. And the drive between Kabul and Jalalabad, two major cities about, about 50 miles apart, has this sloping valley that you drive through. And, of course, there's tunnels. And the valley is an elevation difference, I would say, about 100 feet or maybe 200 feet. So you can see these sloping white uh, snow-topped mountains with sand below and this crystal clear blue water. And it's just really untouched. It's pristine. It's pristine. And you can see caves all around. And in the most obscure areas of these caverns and this area, there's, you know, some foliage growing out the walls. So you see this random tree trying to survive. And the area is incredibly rocky. It looks like Mars to me, if, if Mars had water, I guess. It's just really stunning. It's not one of those countries you think would have extreme natural beauty, but the whole country looks like a bare version of the Grand Canyon. It's really, really wow. is nice especially during summer i highly recommend this if you um if you're not a spy <laughs> so i love your sense of humor man you uh you're so fast and on point man i like i like that a lot too oh, i'm just retarded man straight up i have no filter no i love that man it's it's it's, it's refreshing it's refreshing to be honest with you um I, I feel like so many people have questions i just don't even i mean there's good questions um were you able to get that you can go wherever you want permit that you said was promised to you Oh, yes. No, I have it. My only obligation was I can't show it, but I can read out what it basically says in Pashto because I have memorized it. It's a bragging right. So when I was about five months into Taliban detention, the Taliban pulled me into some office. You know, they, they drove me I mean, they gave me some food and we were eating, having a little picnic with the Taliban. And the Taliban, they basically said, you know what, Miles, you're a real, you're a real guy. You're chill. You're chill. You know what? We're going to give you this permit, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And you know what it's going to say on it? It's going to say, Miles will have no problems in Afghanistan at any point. It basically says a letter of immunity. It says, Miles, an honorary member of the Mujahideen, yeah, cannot be stopped, cannot be searched, cannot be arrested without prior authorization. The only reason to stop Miles in his transit is to check the identification documents ma match with this document and to check the validity of this document. Anyone who stops Lord Miles's mission will be arrested themselves. <laughs> and there's a number of one of the GDI, one of the Taliban chairs people at the bottom. So when I go to a checkpoint, you know, this Taliban guy, he's got his sunglasses on, he comes up to me and he goes, you know, what are you doing here? I go, I flash this letter and they go, oh, and just go, give it back and go, 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 go. And you know what? I, I'm allowed to goof off. I literally have a fuck around and do whatever you want license in Afghanistan. I love it. And I've got no ill attention, so I'm not going to abuse it. But it's really nice to have. Dude, that's an amazing story. I can't believe that. Hey, that's like a video game cheat code, it sounds like, man. That's crazy. Hell yeah. I mean, uh, I still have to pay taxes, unfortunately, but everything else is good. Listen, if anyone, especially yourself, Anthony, if you want to come to Afghanistan with me, Nothing can go wrong. Absolutely nothing. I, I'm not, I'm not going to jinx it. It'll be all fine. Come down. It'll be uh, it'll be sunshine and roses, and um, it'll just be a fun little holiday. 
I'm sure the family will appreciate it. You have me about eighty percent sold, honestly. Like I, 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 like I, I might, I might have to do this just for the. I mean, they let you tape, or they they you get pissed off about that, or like, what's up with I'm that? Chill. I've got, I've got filming licenses, but um, yeah, the minister of tourism, my meta ones, he was just like, yeah, I like your videos. Keep them up. <laughs> do what, you know, it, like because <laughs> there was one awesome. That is yeah. Because, Sometimes I'll just be sitting in Taliban detention and then randomly, you know, I'll be going to the commander's office. There'll be 20 other Taliban there. I would go, hey, uh, you know, who are you? And they'll go, oh, yeah, I'm the, uh, I'm the minister of foreign affairs or the minister of tourism. And then they'll, I'll go, oh, I'm, I'm Lord Miles. I make I make YouTube videos. They're like, oh, the commander's told us about you. You made that shooting with the Taliban video. We liked that. That was good. That was nice. And they were like, can I have your WhatsApp for like when you get out? I was like, hell yeah. So I'll just write down on a piece of paper, give it to them, and we just we just goof off in the group chats. Dude, that's so funny, man. That's so funny, dude. Um, more more comments here. Seen your interview, Bill, last night. Thank you for watching that, Hunter. I appreciate you watching the interview last night. We had a senator on last night. Um, this question's pretty good for you. This one's for you. Uh, a lot of people think you have Stockholm Center. What would you say to those people? That's actually a good. I don't take that as that, but that's a great question, honestly. No, that, that's a bad question because I've never been to Sweden. <laughs> No, people say I have Stockholm syndrome. Absolutely not. No, I'm very objectively strong. Trust me. I, if I was, if I was treated very badly, I would admit it and it would get more views. Like I, at the end of the day, I would admit I wouldn't go back. You see, my was, you yeah, it's like I'm not Muslim. I'm very strong Catholic. But basically, I got arrested for a crime. I committed a crime. Unfortunately, they were like, ah, we got, we got sentenced you to like a minimum sentence, but we're gonna make it very cushy. Sorry this happens. I'm going to give you everything you want, basically, within your power. And I'm like, you know what, that's, that's chill. I get that. I get that. There's things that are out of their control. But from the things inside their control, they helped me out. And they were, they were chill like that. I didn't get tortured. I didn't get beaten. And I'm like, you know, that's, that's quite all right. And to be fair, I'm opening up a gold mine now in Afghanistan. I'm doing some other side businesses over there. And you know what? If they if they treat me like trash, or it turns out you know they they go sideways, yeah, I would say screw them. I would say screw them. I'd be very honest because I wouldn't lie to people. Because people who watch my stuff and follow my social media, they go to these places on my good word. So I don't want to mislead any people. But yeah, I don't think I have Stockholm syndrome. I think I'm retarded, but nah, I think my opinion on Afghanistan is straight. <laughs> no, I think I, like you seem like an authentic guy. You don't seem like much of a bullshitter. You like you, you know, what I mean, from my perspective, I mean, you are in the sense of your humor or something like that, which is funny. But I don't like the facts. I I, I don't think you're bullshitting. I I can kind of I got a kind of detector on that. You know, I I can kind of tell yeah. who's lying and who's not. Like just natural. I think anybody can really. It's not like a special ability. Exactly. I think yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to see through people nowadays. That's why that's why I loved your show. You know, you get on some real people, and when you see some bullshit, you call it out basically. Jefflin, I can't believe I pulled. I got you on here, man. You're a legend, bro. It's like it's, no, it's like I'm, I'm, it's, fan, it's, I'm fan girling to be on here. You know, when you messaged me, I was like, oh, you know, it's, it's like good. you're going backwards in your career by being here. But I appreciate it. You know, I appreciate the charity. You know, I, I think uh, I, I like you. You are you are ballsy and insane, and I love it. Like in all the good ways. I don't. I don't mean that as an insult. But like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and like literally like your bio says you are you are the last great explorer really i mean you just happen to be british also but there's nobody doing what you're doing in 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 the world of entertainment or in the in the world even probably but i mean i mean some of the stuff you're doing is just, is just it's it's amazing man and, and i think that's why we uh, we were actually talking back in december you're like hey i gotta go to afghanistan you were explaining you had to do all this crazy shit to me and i'm like i'm like whatever i'll be here when you're back man like whatever, whatever you're doing i'll be i'll i'll, I'll be here to, to, re, to interview you when you get back man and like and i respect that and like um and before before we uh, were recording you're showing people the merch and stuff you want to go through some of that stuff it's like a lot of people haven't probably ever seen that if you're if that's interesting to you too i mean well i do appreciate that guys i love i love youtubers i know they always clickbait, and I know a few of them actually fake videos. And I like I try to be very authentic. I try and be, tell the truth from my videos, so I do appreciate that too. I'm going to show you guys some Taliban merch. It's coming into my store at the moment. I've got it directly from Afghanistan. No one else is selling this stuff. And if they claim to, it's probably fake from China or something. But let's go in here. ISIS so has I've the got, best speakers, man. I feel I've like got a Taliban is... license plate. That's okay. cool. Just as you do. That's that's been sent to someone. So my room's a bit of a tip. But if we look inside here, guys, this has a resale value for me of forty thousand dollars. So you see these 
patches right here. There's hundreds of patches. I've got many containers. This is one box of like 10. But those are GDI patches. So Taliban intelligence patches. This is like a CIA um, ID badge almost. I've got the authentic Taliban flags right here. The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan flags. I've got these sealed right here. But these, actually I'll try and open it up. Screw it. Customs is going to have a field day anyway. Yeah. Oh, I can't even... Yeah, if we look inside right here, there's some Taliban headbands. So that's cool. Just casually pulling those out. Some special forces patches. Um, I've got some authentic pins, hundreds of pins right here. Showing the Afghanistan flag. You know, just there's normal everyday stuff. And I've also started trading rugs from Afghanistan to England. And to be fair, it's good money. I make good margins. So I'm going to be selling that on my store. So if you guys want to be put on a watch list, head on, head on over there, scare your parents when the package arrives, or steal your mother's and father's credit cards. Um, I approve that um, 100%. And just max them out and uh, buy my cool stuff. You can go to your war hero PTSD veteran in the neighborhood dressed as the Taliban, knock on the door for Halloween and cause them to have like a mental breakdown. <laughs> well, where can people find it? Where, where can people get this merch at online? Oh, it'll be on my upcoming website. So look on my Twitter and Instagram, such Lord Miles, M I L E S, and I'll announce it someday on the 14th of this month. And it'll be a nice little Shopify store. I'm I'm not sending it from the UK. I'm sending that all that box directly to the US. So distribution will be automatic. It'll be through a company, a warehouse company. And every order that comes through will be shipped uh, same day and it'll come within two days. And it's all very professional. So it should be good. And also buy some Anthony. So buy buy some of Anthony's merch too. It looks very good. If you sold fake beards, I would absolutely buy one. I need to blend in with these Taliban guys. <laughs> Yeah, I me mean, thinking, man. Like, I, I definitely, I definitely should make the fake beard merch then. Uh, but I, I have a question. Do you speak Dari? Uh, Does that mean a, a little, little bit? bit I'm not... Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, lik, 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 lik means little, and Khirma means very. So it's like little, very Pashtu. So it means little, very little Pashtu. Um, so I can say a few phrases, but the only issue is. There's no there's no apps or websites to learn Pashto. So it's it's a really hard Arabic. language to get into. And then if you want to like fully understand it, you gotta learn Arabic as well. So it's like a whole chain of languages. It's like trying to learn a small dialect of Mandarin. It's bloody impossible. Um, but I'm I'm growing, I'm growing. And I wanna be one of those YouTubers eventually in within two years where I'm when I'm fluent where I can just go around Afghanistan to speak to random people and to vlog it, because I think that'd be cool. That's what Boulder Bankrupt did in Russia. I think it'd be quite nice. Yeah, yeah. I heard, I heard it's very close to Persian, but I don't I don't know Persian either. So, I mean, I, I, heard, it, yeah. I heard it's a very similar language. Like the Pers I, I just figured being over there, like hearing it, was like, 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 like you'd probably absorb it faster than like uh, Duolingo or something, you know, and if there was a Duolingo yeah. for it, you know. Well, it sounds like, the language sounds like a lot of people have something stuck in their throat, you know, like, <laughs> And it's just it's just interesting to hear, but um, yeah, it's okay. That's awesome, man. So, like, uh, what? Okay, so when you went over there, how long ago did you first go to Afghanistan? Then first was during the fall of Kabul, and that was five days. It was August of twenty twenty one. So, guys, almost okay, been two wow. years. And then I went there three three or four times since that. And then I got arrested. Then I've been back once as well. So I've seen total six or seven times to Afghanistan now. I've what done are the loads of other groups. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Good. Oh, no, carry on. Carry on. No, I just get hyped up. Uh, what did what did the other people do that were arrested with you? What, uh, what were the, some of the other criminals that are what, not yeah. whatever terminology? Well, there was an American man, and I can't say his name because he's still there. But he came in the second day I was in, and he walked in. He's this tall black dude, you know, like really bulky. You know, he looks like a boxer. He looks like Mike Tyson, he's six foot five, and he walks in. I go, oh, hey, man, what, what are you in for? What's going on? Do you do you know what the situation is? And he goes, yo, fuck white people. Shit, why the fuck are you talking to me, nigga? Shit, I'm a terrorist. I'm Al-Qaeda. I'm ISIS. Fuck you. You're an infidel. So I'm like, what? I'm, like, I'm freaking out. I'm just laughing. But also, like, oh. Turns out this, this black man is a schizophrenic. He went to Afghanistan to join ISIS. And he used to be a, um, used to be a, a veteran. He used to serve in Iraq. 
So now he's trying to find ISIS and he's walking in Bin Laden's footsteps. So he went to Pakistan and a few other Muslim nations looking for ISIS and you know now he came to Afghanistan. And the Taliban didn't like him, of course. He claimed to be Muslim, couldn't recite a single verse of the Quran, didn't know like he didn't speak any other language apart from English. Um, he claimed to be American Mujahideen, and they were like, they, they, the head of intelligence would like go to him and go, there's no such thing as American Mujahideen, what are you on about? <laughs> and when I spoke to him, he, because he was of the same guest house I was, but he was in isolation because he sucker punched a member of the Taliban out of nowhere. So he was a danger to himself and others. But I spoke to him and I was like, hey, what's up, man? How are you doing? And no joke, this is exactly what he told me. Exactly what he told me. He goes... Yeah, I'm pretty good, Miles, because the chip in my brain and the chip at the end of my penis is losing the connections to the satellites. Because Joe Biden is beaming satellite images and uh, pain rays into my brain and the end of my penis every day when I try and sleep. And Bin Laden is trying to help me. And Kim Kardashian keeps beaming her thoughts into my mind about all fighting me. And I'm also uh, a long lost relative of Michael Jackson and I'm worth a hundred million dollars. I'm like a top rapper in the game. If you Google my name, you know what will come up. I'm the top guy, but they're trying to prey on my downfall. Joe Biden is. And he just spouted off like that for 20 minutes. He, he's, he's got crazy delusions of grandeur. Um, he's just, he's just off his rockers. It's bloody entertaining to speak to him, but very, very sad. And he also, we found out he got arrested uh, he got further charges because he tried to marry a four-year-old girl in Afghanistan by trying to give a family like a few thousand dollars. But obviously, they said no. They were like, get out of here. Um, what the fuck? And, so yeah, I went, to, I went to him. I was like, my dude, you, why do you want to marry? And he starts sweating bullets. His eyes start. He's like, uh, because I, uh, uh, I want um, citizenship, dual citizenship. And I was like, but my guy, you can't marry in citizenship in Afghanistan. And he starts sweating. He's like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And then I asked him, I was like, hey, have you been in jail before? And he goes, maybe. And I go, okay, well, what were you in jail for? He was like, I was in jail in Thailand for uh, nothing. And I go, oh, my man, you can tell me. And he goes, uh, well, I didn't try and have sex with an underage girl. I didn't know she was 12. And I'm sitting there like, holy crap. I was like, this is not a good guy. This is not a misunderstanding or anything. So that guy was a little bit loopy, crazier than me. Um, God help him, uh, because bloody hell, I, I couldn't. Um, the, another guy I was with, Iranian fella, he jumped the border from Iran into Afghanistan, no passport, no visa. And he would go to grave sites, like old grave sites in remote villages. And at night, he would dig up the graves and he would loot the graves of jewelry and you know anything buried in there. And then he would get a doctor to surgically implant it in his stomach and jump across the border back again. So uh, what happens is with smuggling in Iran, if you jump a border from Iran to Afghanistan, the Iranian government turns a blind eye. You know, the border's crew is like, oh, he's leaving, we don't care. But when you come back, then they ask, they ask for a bribe or something. So he was trying to hide it in his stomach. And of course he got caught and he was like, oh, yeah, I didn't do anything. Are you keeping me for nothing? I did. I'm innocent. And, like, he admitted he to do this stuff to me, like, two months later. And I'm there like, oh, this guy deserves it. There was one guy as well. He was from Turkmenistan. And this guy was, like, um, he was, like, a midget. You know, he, he had something wrong. He had a big, large head. You know, those types of guys. Poor guy. Um, mentally a child, almost. And during COVID, his family died in Turkmenistan. So he was like a farmer. And then he just got a flight to Turkey with like a, like a tourist visa and just stayed there for like two years. And then the Turkish government found him working as a farmer. And I don't believe it too, because he's very, very pale. But of course, Turkey has a lot of sun. So if you're a farmer outside, you at least have a little bit of a tan or whatever. So he got deported, but they didn't know where he was from. So he told them, I am from Turkmenistan. But he saw him praying, and they were like, oh, no, he's actually Afghan. He's Afghan. We're going to send him back to Afghanistan. So he got sent to Afghanistan, and he arrived there, no passport or visa. And the Taliban like, what the fuck? Who's this guy? I'm like, how did he get here? And he speaks no English, so he just started speaking Turkmen to them. And they're like, I, what, what's this language? I don't know who he is. Let's just put him in a room. He might have snuck on a flight, or we might be you know, someone dodgy. We'll figure out where he's from and deport him. And he got deported rather quickly. The most interesting one, though, you want to hear this, guys, is a Chinaman. I missed all oh, this Chinaman. 
You know the stereotype, Anthony, where a flock of Chinese people would walk through a city and take pictures of everything. You know that? Yeah. Have you seen yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yes, yeah. So this guy is like 70 years old. He's never been outside China. So he's a famous writer, apparently. And he his first country he goes to is Afghanistan. <laughs> and he brings <laughs> this big DSLR, you know, like a full, it looks like a telescope, this DSLR, this camera. And he thinks it's smart. He thinks it's real, real genius to suddenly walk into a Taliban military base with this camera and start taking photos. You know, he's just there, like, you know, click, 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 click. And no one questions him because they're like, who is this Chinaman taking photos of our military base? Oh, I'm not going to stop him. He must belong because no one's stupid enough to do that randomly. Like he's inside a military base. And then suddenly the commander comes out, you know, he's drinking his cup of whatever. And he, he spits it out. He's like, who is this Chinaman taking pictures of our sensitive military base? Uh, arrest him immediately. And then he was crying in the jail. And I spoke, I spoke, I speak some Mandarin. So I ask him what happened. He he explains this and he speaks some English too. So we, we fill in the details. And he gets deport, deported within a week. They're like, uh, just, just get him out of here. This this man's too old. It's a little bit silly. Yeah, we've heard stories about the Chinese. We know what he's up to. Just get him out. Just get him out. Um, there was one guy. Oh, this is the last guy I'll tell you about. He was a Russian fella. And he was from this radical Muslim Russian village, basically. So it's, it's called Chechnya. So he's a, he's a very firm Muslim. But he's, he's a white dude. And he comes in and he speaks like five words of English. And I have my laptop on me. I have my laptop. So I'm watching movies, you know, and I'm sharing movies with all these other detainees. And he goes to me and goes, Miles, um, no wife, big depression. And I go, oh, you don't have your wife. Okay. He goes, wife, big tata, big, big. I'm like, okay, okay, your wife has big bazungas. Fair enough, fair enough, mates. Don't know what you're telling me. But he's like, no wife, no fuck, big depression. Oh, and I go, okay, okay, I get, I get the idea, I get the idea. And then you know what he says? He says, uh, computer, uh, fuck video, fuck movie. And I go, no, I am not, I am not requesting porn off the Taliban to stick onto my hard drive, Abdullah, to stick in a room where you can jack off in Taliban prison. I, I do not approve of that. You know, you're meant to be a strong Muslim, my dude. I'm a very strong Catholic. Uh, I, I do not encourage porn. Hell no. And one night, shit you not, this, oh, this got to me. I was pissed off. I had my own room, but some of us like sleeping together, like in the same, it was a big room. We kind of slept like, you know, free in a room because it was just nice to have friends around all the time. And I see his sheet of his bed start moving up and down. And it looks like a tent. It looks like a tent, you know. And I hear some, like, gasping and, like, a little bit of moaning escaping. And I flick on the light and I go, Abdullah, what are you doing? And he goes, oh, uh, big depression, no wife. And I go, Abdullah, you're not jerking off in the Taliban prison, Abdullah. Get the fuck out, Abdullah. You're not, you're, not, you're not doing this here. You're not doing this here. No, no, no. And he does a walk of shame and everyone looks at him. And the Taliban, like, laughing. A lot of things. Oh, it's just oh, it's gonna be a good one, guys. <laughs> no, that's hilarious, man. Like, uh, there's more people. Are, well, I guess the, one of the same people is asking a question. Like, uh, what do the Taliban do as a hobby since music's banned? Bro, well, they they definitely listen to some music. There's like this own Taliban music, so it's not instruments. It's a bunch of singing that's allowed. But they all watch TikTok all day and play PUBG and like crappy mobile games. And we just goof off. We have this one board game that's kind of not allowed, but the younger generation play it. And it's like it's like Monopoly. And it's all right. Um, but they literally just sit on their phones all day. They're totally online. Like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, one Yeah, I would be giving them movies. I would be giving you know, we would be watching movies together. I had movie night for Taliban, you know, they would buy some <laughs> Pepsi for me in exchange for me what letting them watch movies, and then I would either explain to them. Or I would put on subtitles, I would download. So I had internet access supervised, which was very nice. And we were just chill. We watched Titanic like seven times. One of the Taliban, like at first, I was like, ah, I don't get it. It's not a war movie. Yeah, you know, we love all this stuff. I was the second or third time we watched it. He actually shed a tear. <laughs> what movie was it? Titanic. Oh, wow. Classic. Classic. Yeah. What's your favorite movie? Oh, man, that's so hard, man. Like, I, I feel like I just watch YouTube now. Um. If you, ask me, yeah. if you ask me, it's like a kid. I don't know, like Clockwork Orange or something. But but I mean, I, I 
At, as, at 37, I don't know. I, I still watch the show Sliders. You ever heard of that? No, no. What's it about? But I can pirate it. I don't know this... anything I watch. <laughs> I'm, I got I got DVDs like a, like like it's uh, like I'm Amish, but uh, <laughs> of, of of sliders actually like uh, it's it's show where like uh, you you slide through parallel dimensions and stuff like that. It's a nineties it was a nineties American show that lasted about a season or two on 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 real television, then went to sci fi for the last three seasons, and it's like uh, it gets it gets shittier as it goes. But I still but but I still I still like it, and it's like nostalgic to me. I, I still watch uh, sl- the TV show Sliders. What about you? What, what would you say your favorite movie is? Oh, favorite movie. Good point. I would actually say The Accountant. I believe The Accountant from 2015 or 2016. Not familiar with um, that. Not, yeah, not many people have heard of it. It's basically the story of this accountant who's extremely autistic, but he's good with numbers. Extremely good with numbers. But he goes into criminal enterprises where he basically states, well, you know, I'm going to uncook your books or figure out where the money went or who stole it, you know, to the scene load of cartel, to a bunch of criminals. And he's, you know, wanted... The whole plot is he's been watched by the CIA and he's really autistic. So you watch him live a very simple lifestyle, but he's obviously rich and he's kind of stoic. It's, it's a unique perspective on the whole uh, franchise of just, you know, being a badass uh, soldier uh, guy, but he's an autistic accountant too. Um, I hope they make a sequel as well, but sliders, I'm going to pirate that right now. I'm going to load up pirate bay. Um, I don't recommend anyone else do that because I'm, I'm, not being serious, I wouldn't pirate movies. That's satire, one hundred percent. No, I uh, I, I turned a school bus into into uh to an RV, and I, I I set up like this old like um this old really? this old TV that has like DVDs and stuff. And what did you say? Sorry, you really you've done like a school bus conversion, like a um a uh, what's called tiny house almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I turned it into that, and like um. I had this old TV that has like a DVD uh, DVD player on the side of it, so I just got like a book of DVDs. And then, like I got every episode of like Rick and Morty, got every episode of like Sliders, Adventure Time, and, and then I got a bunch of weird movies. I get some oh. dollar bins. I've been I've been like uh, so I've been like finding like old movies from like those dollar bins that are like because no nobody values DVDs anymore, so they're like a dollar, dude. <laughs> like so it's like yeah, I've been it's, stacking it's them awesome. up, like just getting a bunch of good. TV. Well, yeah, I mean, if if your hard drive fails, you're screwed. I've got this four terabyte hard drive right here. It's got all my media. But compared to DVDs, if this fails, it's screwed. It will do within like five or ten years. Those those DVDs and Blu-rays will just basically go on for years, I imagine, way longer. And Adventure Time, too, you mentioned that. I love, I love that. I've got a soft spot for cartoons like that. You know, when you're dealing with being guns being put to your head and risking your life every single month, a wholesome TV show like Adventure Time, no, that's that's nice. Yeah, my wife got me into it originally, and it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty good. Like that's one of the three three shows we've been kind of tearing through. I've been tearing through Rick and Morty right now. I got, I got all five. I got five seasons on DVD, and I I just I've had a TV for three days, and I've already watched like most of the Rick and Morty episodes while, like, while I'm working and stuff. It's like because I didn't have a TV. For, oh yeah, for like, like I don't know a couple of years. I I thought it was dumb. I thought TV was dumb, and like I mm. still do, but like now I have it again. <laughs> Oh, no, that's chill. Well, to be fair, TVs are dirt cheap, so if you have one, you have one. That's chill. I just have a laptop, but Rick and Morty, absolutely. I do like it. I hate the fan base. It's a bunch of red, as you know what I mean. But if you watch the show, it's good to turn off your mind. It's kind of entertaining. It's got a few layers. It's kind of funny from time to time. Yeah. It definitely is one of those things. Yeah, it's one of those. Uh, I like like they're always ma- they're always making fun of God or something. I'm, I'm a you, you mentioned you're Catholic. And I'm, I'm a I'm a Christian yeah. as well. Like and I, I mean this this is the rosary obviously, but I'm more Christian than I am Catholic. Just like a servant of Christ. But but I mean so, so the, the the jokes are kind of annoying. But I'm not gonna like I don't I, I'm also a free speech guy. So it's like you're allowed you're allowed to be wrong and more heaven for me. You know that's how I feel about it. You know. Yeah, exactly. I'm kind of a free a free speech guy myself. But at the same time, if I see you know the writers of Rick and Morty on the streets, they might make contacts with a brick I throw over head, but you know it's it's like you know give or take right there. I'm all about free speech, but I'm also about freely assaulting people that I disagree with sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I I, 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 feel like, I feel like they no I <laughs> I feel like they use too much blasphemy, you know, but that, like I said, that's that that's on their soul, not mine. You know, I, I apologize for them every time they say it almost. Like I'm just I'm just like, oh man, they don't know what they're doing. I would I wouldn't be making all those bla- I wouldn't be making all those jokes, man, you know. About, about, I, do feel like, I do feel like Hollywood and you know kids TV shows nowadays they just they sprinkle in a little bit of anti-Christian propaganda and I just want to show these people that it's not welcome that it's not acceptable at the end of the day if you insult the Jews you call it anti-Semitic if you insult the Muslims you know they, they bomb you 
But if you saw the Christians, apparently it's just fine. Apparently Jesus is just some joke, even though he saved the last souls. So at the end of the day, if I could do anything in my power to show that this is something you do not joke about, I absolutely will enforce it to a full degree. I, th- I think God is that, you know, I feel, I feel I, I, like, I mean, I, I feel like it's the only, it's the only real religion because uh, I mean, I mean, because everybody's oh, mad at him. Everybody's mad. At him. All the rest of them are fake religions, in my opinion. That's why they're allowed to be insulted almost, you know, it's like, uh, or whatever terminology, you know, it's like, uh, I just feel like, uh, no, I feel like God had, I mean, I'd worry more about God than you or me uh, on what we think, man. You know, I, I just think that, um, yeah, a lot of those jokes are just nuts. I mean, and like I said, like, yeah. like not much, not much bothers me. I got a really messed up sense of humor and stuff like that. But like, I really, I, I don't mess with blasphemy at all. I don't, I don't mess with God at all. You know, I, I think that that's, uh, that's kind of, it's not necessarily taboo as it, as it is just like one of the only rules you have to follow. I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's just a couple rules that he wants from us, man. And that's definitely one of them, you know? Yeah. It's very easy to keep and live a godly lifestyle because at the end of the day, it benefits you as well. It's not a restriction. It's a liberation when you realize it too. And at the same time, God has an excellent sense of humor, um, absolutely. But if you if you insult God, I don't think that's going to end well for anyone. And you know, these these elitists, these atheists, these satanic people who disagree with God's message. I guess if you you know, I guess if you've never heard the word of Jesus Christ, and you're a little bit on the fence, and you grew up in an atheist family, I did. Like I, I get it, you know. But yeah, if you yeah. go out of your way to insult Christ, you know, uh, make up all this nonsense about him being trans. Um, no, absolutely disgusting. And I believe these people should honestly be be punished or at least they should be stopped, to put it lightly. I mean, they, they they're will. in our governments, your governments especially, unfortunately, they're in our governments, they're in our schools, our institutions, and it really disrupts you the wrong way. It really certainly does. It's like um it's like what's happening in Texas nowadays. They allow this unrestricted mass immigration, but no one wants it. No one wants it, but they're allowing it. So I don't understand the point of a democracy. If it's not the will of the people, um, basically, you know, for a decision, it doesn't make sense to me. The whole country disagrees with it, but the president does it or the prime minister does it. So I think the only way from there is to destroy our elected officials. Um, but, you know, I, I want the YouTube video to stay up. So I'll just say in Minecraft or something. But, yeah. Yeah, no, I think I think we've all been com- I think I think all of our institutions have been compromised, obviously. I think I, I mean. They're, they're, they're the only real American sport left is UFC, man. I mean, the rest of them have all like cucked to China, man. Like, it's like basically China probably blackmails everybody with the phones. Like, they monitor everybody with these like cameras and microphones, GPS system. Uh, they make all the phones. I mean, it's like it's like a million Trojan horses instead of one. And, and then I think that um, I I think that um, they blackmail their way to the top and they print money and then transfer the currency to your currency and my currency and influence a lot of officials. And I think that like I mean, when people realize what's going on, I hope it's not too late. But I mean, I, I just I just think that uh, I, I don't know, like it's gone it's gone far enough. And I, I mean, this is I don't know. It's just and that's a, that's another day. I mean, we should get back to the fun interview of you more. So but, but I think I, I think that's just like the world's probably at risk and there's no Superman. No one's going to save us, you know, to keep it to that. Yeah, it's so easy, man. Uh, yeah. So, well, let's get back. So, to- uh, <laughs> so- <laughs> I wish we had ads right now to like buy Pepsi, you know, like in the middle of like in the, in the middle of just like yeah. yeah, the world's probably ending, bro. We're all gonna be communists. We're we'll making Nikes for China. Here, buy Pepsi, you know. It's like yeah, uh, buy Pepsi, corn syrup, and uh, you know uh, GMO stuff. Uh, buy it; it's really good. Uh, you know, tastes great. That's I only drink water. Right? Yeah, I only drink water and, like tequila or something, man. Yeah, I get. That. I, I drink, drink like like I drink water, coffee. And like once a year, I would have a Dr. Pepper. I just I have a craving for it, you know. But it's, it's a treat. Year. No, it's yeah, a treat, yeah. not a it's a treat, not a daily beverage. Yeah, and it's I like got, a pie or something. You don't eat pie for every meal. Oh, I love pie, dude. I mean, I have a little bit of a, ca- a cancer causing chemical for a treat. Just a little, just a little little smidge of right. like, yeah, just a little smidge of poison. Just like a nice little little nudge of it, you know, as a treat. Right, and that's <laughs> what it should be. It shouldn't be your entire like meal. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. We had a lot of we had a lot of questions. I don't want to waste time. You're you're an absolute legend. Yeah. I feel like I can talk to you about for nine hours about anything. Honestly, okay, so Thank let's you. get to some of these questions that people are nice enough to spend their Tuesday uh, watching this or Wednesday if you're in wherever you're at. You know, whatever day you spend. We got. Uh, are there any <laughs> Taliban members, secret anime fans? There is one member of the Taliban that I've met that has watched the entire um, show of Death Note. So I think they, they liked it for the psychology. This guy was like 34 years old. He was very he was very stoic. Uh, he's lost a lot of people in his life, but he's like, I like it because it's the psychology is good. I mean, it's a little funny. 
and I like the cartoon. The cartoon is good for the heart, I think he said. But a lot of them just, you know, scroll through TikTok and just watch whatever comes up. Same with Facebook Live. But sadly, not many, uh, not many fans of anime. I do know one guy. He lives in Kabul, but he's not an Afghan. He's like programmer. He's very Westernized. Very Westernized. He's like he's more Western than most people nowadays. And he's addicted to anime too. He loves that stuff. So, yeah, he watches the degenerate uh, animes, unfortunately. But you know, it's funny to think he's... about like the uh, the Taliban doing the same thing. Everybody else does, and just watching TikTok. That's like hilarious. Like, uh, to, to, th- <laughs> to think about that. Like to, to me, it's hilarious. Like, uh, like this one's. Uh, what's your most awkward moment in Afghanistan? <laughs> Oh yeah, this I have. I can say it. Yeah, I can say this. So I, one of the commanders would come in every single day. His name was Iobi, and he would go around all the prisoners and ask, you know, what's your needs? Do you need some more toothpaste? Do you fancy like something? Uh, is it is your stomach okay? You know, do checkups. And one day he comes up to me and he sits down and he's just like, I'm gonna rest here for 20 minutes if you don't mind. You know what? So he does, and I can see in the reflection of the window behind him his phone screen, what he's looking at. And he keeps scrolling through TikTok. And on this TikTok is a feed of these black women scantily dressed dancing. So his whole, his whole ag- algorithm is basically like, you know, uh, like light, a light level of like black porn, basically. So I was there like, oh, you know, don't do that, dude. And then it happens again because one, one day I'm in uh, the office and I need to say something, but the uh, the Taliban don't understand this lingo, so they asked me to translate using one of their phones. So he, the commander goes, Iobi, hand over this phone to Miles. And Iobi's like, okay. And he hands over. I open Chrome. It's X videos. It's X videos. And I just close it and I go, Mushkinisha, no problem. And just wink at him. I just, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to cause issues for him. And it happened like one other time after that, but this dude is down bad. And, I found that a little bit awkward to know what type of videos he likes and what he's watching in his free time. Poor guy. It's weird to know that about anybody, you know, especially the, like there. Yeah, know, it's that's definitely a weird thing to know about people. Yeah. What was uh, What was the most fun uh, that you had there? I went to the water park with the Taliban, so we went on a few slides. <laughs> that was pretty really good. <laughs> That, hang on, what's that? that is the best YouTube video idea I've ever heard in my entire life. So, so sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. That was just crazy to hear that. That was that was after, like the Taliban walk, they're going to the, what was that like? I have to I have to hear about that. Like, look. oh yeah, they just wore shorts. They went topless as well. Um, they were very excited at first. They were a little bit awkward. They got in the water. I started splashing them, and they just they just start laughing. They splash back, and I go, okay, let's go on a slide. They go, oh, okay, oh. and I've never been. <laughs> Some of them have never been on these slides before or gone swimming in a war park before. They've been to lakes and stuff, but they had a lot of fun. And, you know, you saw their energy in their childhood kind of come back a little bit. Um, we actually ate, I think it was like uh, chicken hot dogs or something um, at the canteen in the water park. Um, I told them they couldn't go to the water for like 20 minutes, otherwise they get cramps. It was, it was quite cool, you know. It was like Ferris Bueller's Day Off almost. That is the... That would be the best YouTube video of all time. Like, 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 tal- like you with the Taliban at a water park. That is the best, like, documentary or or YouTube video idea I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, I, just, that is the most I, asked I asked them. I was like, "Hey, can we take a selfie?" And like, I want to tweet tweet this out because I took some photos from you know my Taliban custody and I posted them online. They said, "Oh, sorry, Mars, but these men are topless, so we're not allowed to take photos." I'm like, "Ah, I, I could have photoshopped a T-shirt on them, but." Uh, yeah, it's sadly it was. Uh, you can go there topless, but you can't take photos of it. But elaborate on that a little bit. Are they not allowed to not wear shirts? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So when in, when you're in the water park, you're allowed to be in shorts, like you know, like normal people. But you're not allowed to take photos of it. Almost like it's looked down upon if you share it online because it's like a younger child or a woman might come across if it's on social media. And it's like, why are you posting pictures of your body? You know, it's like you can go to a sauna. In Afghanistan, but obviously you can't start a live streaming. It's in there almost. So they've got these so are you not, laws. In, yeah. So outside of the water park, you not are you not allowed to? You're not allowed to take your shirt off outside of a water park. Basically? No, no. There's very strict Muslim country. So outside the water park in Kabul and Afghanistan as a whole, no shorts, t-shirts even looked down upon. So you can't show your sleeves. It's apparently too revealing. Um, yeah, you just have to wear like things that cover up. You know, I'm not a big fan of that. You know, I'm not Muslim. I don't agree with it 100%. But I like the idea of, um, you know, having some 
not having your ass handed me out like some girl was in the West. You know, I, I get it to some degree. No, I actually respect that more than wearing your pajamas uh, in public. No, I definitely and um and I go to a I go to a gym out here. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, and like a, I go to a gym out here that has like a has like a water park, water slide, hot tub kind of area. And I see a lot of Muslim women just wearing the whole. They're wearing the garb still in in the water, and, and I just like. I mean, I guess I never thought about like that until you said that, that that was like a rule. I just assumed they're just, yeah, you know, I was just like, whatever. I don't even, you know, I mean, I'm just like, people are people, you know, I'm just like, unless you're affecting me in a negative way, I don't necessarily care. Yeah. Or well, a lot of Muslim women, they pretend to be modest in public to a whole, it's a whole perception thing for the Muslims. When they get home, they, they, they misbehave massively. So like they just start shouting at their husbands and they just start hitting them or slapping them. The husband's like, Oh, I've never had to speak to women before. And the one woman I've spoken to is now slapping me. Oh, I wish I was in a cave's back again. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, they're, not, they're not as modest as you think. The Catholics and the Christians in general are the right religions. So, so if you find a, a real Catholic woman or a real Christian woman, you know, they're the best pick, of course. Only if you're a Christian yourself, though. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely Christian, so is my wife. Yeah, no, I think uh, I definitely... Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely like serving, uh, serving a, an actual God instead of a rock, you know? So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And, um, <laughs> no offense to any, any of your Taliban friends watching, but they're, uh, they're God's fake. No, um, no, I'm, <laughs> I was joking, but, uh, we have more questions and I feel like I just have to answer these. These are just good people. I, I, it's probably some of the same people, but are you allowed to mention who the highest ranking, uh, Taliban you spoke to are? Well, I've spoken to, I would say about four ministers or so a minister of tourism, a minister of foreign affairs, two others I can't speak about because they're not public ministers, if that makes sense. And of course, the head of foreign intelligence in Afghanistan. So the head of foreign intelligence, he doesn't want his name out there. So in the book, I, he told me to refer to him as the commander. So I'm calling him the kind commander because he's very kind. But this man has personally killed 200 members of ISIS himself. And I've seen the videos. But he's actually very kind in real life. But so he has zero... I'm sorry, dumb it down for me. So ISIS and Taliban are like enemies? All big enemies, yeah. So okay. when the Americans left, there was a huge problem with ISIS in certain areas like Jalalabad, so on the Pakistani border, the Iranian border, and the Tajikistan border. Because they saw Afghanistan as an easy place to go to, a safe haven almost. So the Taliban, because they're friends of basically all the villagers, they like the Taliban, to put it lightly. If they see like ISIS start forming, they literally tell the Taliban, hey, there's this going on here. So the Taliban will actually do an intelligence operation they mean, they're not stupid. They actually put together a plan and just watch and figure out the entire network and actually send in spies sometimes into ISIS. And then when they have the entire network, they just do an operation where they just get their version of a SWAT team, probably special forces, and just raid the entire place. And they would go to these ISIS members and they heard the stories from the villagers of what they would do. ISIS are completely barbaric. The Taliban, you know, people you know, live absolutely fine in Afghanistan usually. Obviously, there's some outliers, I get that. But compared to ISIS, ISIS are the worst. ISIS are a big, big problem. Like, I know this one family, uh, their baby was born, so they shot some guns in the sky. That's like a tradition to them. And ISIS saw this and they killed the entire family just for shooting guns in the, art, in the sky as a celebration. So this commander of mine, he heard these horrific stories, hundreds of them, and his heart obviously went cold, cold because these people are monsters. And he would go to them and go, are you Taliban? And sorry, are you, are you ISIS? And they would go, yes, and he would shoot them or cut their throats. And if they say no, he would throw them in the jail until they admitted because they were, he knew they were, or they were found innocent, which almost never happened because most of them were ISIS. And so he left these members of ISIS, 200 members of ISIS in the streets, just as a show of force. So there were 200 bloody bodies in the streets, and then this guy's personally eradicated ISIS from Afghanistan. So now Afghanistan is safe. And to put it lightly, NATO couldn't do that in 20 years because you don't understand how these people work. But the Taliban are like, yeah, we're not we're not friends of ISIS. Afghanistan is for the Taliban and the Afghan people, not other organizations that have differing ideologies. That's crazy. You know, no, it makes a lot of sense. Like because Afghanistan's never really been able to have been taken mm -hmm. over. I mean, by by uh, USSR, or USSA, USA, or any any real country. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We don't That's understand crazy. the culture. I mean, I mean, basically, it's like a, it's a completely different culture. Um, but I mean, ISIS has great tennis shoes though. They they, they have the best sneakers yeah. in the game. I, I think personally, I don't I don't agree with anything they say. But I love I love the I love the sneaker game they have. You know. 
Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, they're the worst hairdressers because when they meet white people, the white people tell them, "Hey, it's a little bit off the top, you know." But they end up cutting here, and that's that's. Not good. <laughs> but um, that's, I I met a member of ISIS whilst in Taliban custody though. Oh, hello. Oh no! What's happened to my internet? Um, Anthony, are you there, mate? Is it me or him? Apparently, I'm fine. Uh, maybe I'll change. No, oh, it's live. I've still got a connection. Hey, hey, man! I think you went for a second. You still there? Yeah, yeah. No, I have uh, my star. I have Starlink, so something probably messed up with the satellite. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's cool. Just see, oh yeah, you have tapping in. I guess. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was yeah. a guest, bro. Yeah, yeah. With, with, with me as a host, he was a guest, man. They do not want this conversation happening, bro, at all. Yeah, yeah. like shut it down, oy vey. But um, yeah, I was just saying, I met a member of ISIS whilst in Taliban prison. Did I tell you that? No, I don't think you told me that one. That's crazy. Oh yeah. So what happened was one day I'm having tea, I'm having a little picnic with the commander. And everyone stands up and they start whispering in Pashto, and I, I can't understand what the fuck's going on. And he said, Miles, we're having a new person arrive soon. Be ready. And I go, okay. So I think, oh, it must be just another member of the Taliban, maybe a minister, some important guy. And this guy comes in, he's just got a long beard, very serious face. And I walk up to him, I start shaking his hand, I'm like, oh, hello. And they, they bat my hand away. And they go, no, Miles, that's a captured member of ISIS. So I go, crap, and I slap him. I slap him, I just react automatically. I slap him, <laughs> slap him and revise him across the face. And they're like, Mark, no, Mars, don't slap him. He's, he's on trial now. He needs to meet the commander. And the guy sees the commander and he goes white. He's sort of shivering. He knows his guy's reputation. He tries to leave. They grab him by the arms. They put him on his knees. And the guy just speaks to him. And of course, and they do the whole routine, which I won't speak about. But to put it lightly, they have zero tolerance. And a reaction to uh, interrogation shows, which is good to see. That's crazy, man. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine being in a Taliban prison, let alone being ISIS in a Taliban prison. They're, they're probably more chill on you than would be an American, I imagine. They probably don't like us as much as like, uh, uh, do they hate the British or do they hate America? I mean, what, what, I don't know them at all. What, what um, what's that yeah, situation they like? Hate, the they hate the soldiers of America and like some of the American government because they were like, oh yeah, we get the whole. You evaded us for Bin Laden thing, but he wasn't even here. And this is our land, and we just wanted to live. And we just didn't know what was going on, so we decided to fight you guys because you were invaders. And we don't know why the government did this. And finally, um, Donald Trump was like, oh, we, what, we should leave. So we were good for that, but we're not on good terms with the Americans right now. But, you know, the American people, if they want to come for tourism or business, that's chill. But we got have to make sure they're doing it all legitly. You know, we don't want anyone coming here. And screwing up the security or just taking the piss with taxes or let regulations that we have or anything. So we've been welcomed to Alzheimer's, but they are a bit wary. If you get what I mean. They are obviously going, you know, what's his angle? Why is he here? Like, why did he pick Afghanistan? So our spies there. I know for a fact the CIA does still operate in Afghanistan and a few other agencies. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, the whole reason I also do support the Taliban is, in general, if the Taliban fall, it means that, you know, Afghanistan does fall because either ISIS or Al-Qaeda take charge again. So they capture areas. It becomes a huge drug epidemic because they start growing cash. ISIS have actually grown, uh, started making meth in other countries. So ISIS will probably turn Afghanistan into a meth-producing factory. And it would also mean a mass immigration crisis into Europe from Afghans, another humanitarian problem. Probably another 9-11, unfortunately, um, because another Bin Laden would rise or whatever. And what, what happens then? Does the US reinvade? It, it doesn't make sense. It's uh, the Taliban are the only chance for Afghanistan. So, you know, they've gone 20 years ago from smashing TVs with baseball bats to now terminally online with TikTok. And so, yeah, they're not they're not completely liberal. They're not up to our Western standards. I get that. Like, I disagree with them on women's rights and all this other stuff. I disagree. I'll be honest. But, you know, they're, they're way better than they were 20 years ago, and the society has changed dramatically. So I say give them some leeway, because if you isolate them, they'll end up like the next North Korea. You know what I mean? you got you got to make baby steps and guide them. You know, you can't expect them to suddenly ch change into a, I don't know, LGTV uh, society. 
<laughs> no, well, well said, man. No, honestly, well said. And, and like, I, I don't even necessarily blame him for 9 11. 9 11 looked like a controlled, a controlled demolition to me to invade a bunch of countries yeah. putting an oil pipeline in. Oh, yeah, well, like, to be honest, I don't even necessarily people. blame him. Some dancing people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I don't necessarily blame him for that. Well. I mean, wait, what? Oh, I'd say 9 11 was a plain role. Get it? Yeah. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's funny, man. No, but I'm saying I'm not. I'm not even like mad. At I I know a lot of uh, troops and probably and, and a lot of my friends probably disagree. I mean, but but I just like I I don't see them responsible at all. I think it was a lithium ion grab, an opiate grab. Um, I think it was a definitely a resource grab. I, I I mean, just I mean that's how I view it. But I mean, I mean that's just my opinion. I'm just a fucking dude with an opinion, you know. Like, uh, but I, yeah, I don't know shit about it. I wasn't a soldier. I wasn't you over there. I don't know anything about these motherfuckers other than what TV told me or the internet told me. I'm I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a complete fucking idiot, you know. To be honest, like I, I have no experience in it at all, and that's just my opinion with having no experience. I got you. Well, with a resource grab, I I do agree with you there. Like when the U.S. Uh, came to Afghanistan, they did a geological survey in the first year of arrival, and then he slowly branched out to all the other countries, which is kind of weird, you know, if you invade a country. Why are you serving, surveying for minerals, if that makes sense? And they found $3 trillion of mineral reserves. Oh, and yeah. they were trying to you know, build um, you know, uh, factories and you know, mining sites to mine this gold. And mine this lithium, all this other stuff. But the Taliban knew, hey, you can't take out resources with a, a, a focus attack, attacks on these sites. So we never got off the groundwork. And I think the Americans were like, ah, this is costing too much. Um, you know, we've we've now lost some revenue from Epstein's islands. Uh, we'd go, we'd go get out of Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't. I don't think any any government's good. You know, I think people are good everywhere. Like the government's are nasty. You know, and um, I, I try to keep these about an hour, but but uh, but dude, I feel like uh, I literally talked to you about nine hours. And if you ever want to come back, I definitely have you back, man. Um, but That's if you want to throw out any kind of links. Dude, awesome. Yeah, if you don't throw out any links or anything like that, any promo or anything like that, I'll put up your Twitter for everybody watching. Or if you're listening at yeah, home, thanks, uh, dude. no, uh, oh, real, thank real you. On Twitter. Uh, if you're listening to this later on Spotify or whatever apps you listen to, or if you're watching this, one of the 408 people watching now, follow him on Twitter. Uh, follow him on everything. I mean, that's his name on everything, I think, also. Uh, but if you have anything I don't have, uh, the link in the description to his yeah. book, uh, Lord Miles in Afghanistan, it will be it's in the description if you're watching later or now. That book right there linked to it. And then, yeah, if you have any links outside of those, I know those. I appreciate that because, to be fair, most of my read, most of my uh, followers can't read or write. We're all retarded at the end. So they just look at the nice pictures. But honestly, yeah, just follow me on YouTube. I hit 100K. I'm going to start uploading soon. I have four videos that are being officially edited and they're filmed by my videographer. I'm going to upload once a week, sorry, once every three weeks for a year. Um, I'm not, everything backlogged is working it's all coming together guys trust the plan and you know what guys it's it's lovely to be on thanks for having me on anthony as well uh it's, it's been lovely and i'm definitely gonna come on again too awesome no if you asked me before the show who my favorite and most interesting guest was and i now think that's you man like you you literally had like some of the best stories like i mean i no one has ever i've never talked to anyone captured by the taliban and had a good good memory of it too i mean so, i mean i'm like this is my new favorite episode. Um, I, I appreciate everybody watching at home. If you uh, thanks for spending your Tuesday here and watching with, without Lord Miles, without you guys watching, without Smokey's Edibles, luxurious be- bastard beard oil, this would be fucking delusional. I'd be a guy talking to himself in his bus. So I appreciate everyone that's a part of this. And um, and again, um, this this is my new favorite episode. So I appreciate you coming on here, brother. Like, thank you. Thank, thank you, my dude. Well, God bless everyone, and God bless your podcast. It's bloody good, good dude. I've had some. I've had loads of podcast experiences, but. Yours is generally very good. It flows well. Good guy as well. I've seen some of your episodes beforehand. Solid content, solid opinions. I mean, it's, it's good. Thanks, brother. God bless you and your family too. And um, if you're watching this at home, I hope all of your dreams come true. I hope you could write a book called Afghanistan one time uh, too. I hope one day you have a cell phone podcast where you have absolute fucking legends come on here. I hope every single fucking one of your dreams comes true. Excuse the language. I hope every one of your dreams comes true if you're watching this. Thank you. God bless you. I'm out.